Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and we're going to be looking at historical volatility. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and check out the sale on the premium list, which you can find a link to in the description below, or go to intothecryptoverse.com and you can lock in the lower rate as long as you do not cancel. You will get access to all these charts, as well as a number of other things. Let's go to Japan. So I think this chart is, is somewhat interesting. And, and basically what we're going to be looking at um, primarily here is just we're going to look at the 60-day volatility of Bitcoin. Okay, It's just the degree of variation of, trading, uh, of a trading price series over time. And here we're, we're measuring it as a standard deviation of the natural logarithm, natural logarithm of daily returns over the past 30, 60, or 180 days. In this case, we're going to be specifically focusing on, on 60 days. Now, what do you notice when you look at this? Well, you always want to go look at the, you know, look at the peaks, right? Look at the peaks and, and see, are they, are they indicative of anything, you know, important? Well, one of the things you'll note is that, you know, seeing, at least in recent times, seeing the volatility, the 60-day volatility, say, exceed 5%, has actually been pretty indicative of either a major bottom or a major top, okay? And I'm going to show you what I mean. So back at the end of 2018, when we had this vol when we had this rapid price depreciation in the price of Bitcoin, we dropped like 50%. You can see the 60-day the volatility reached about 5% or so. And that marked a major bottom. But in the same manner, during 2019, later in the, the, the summer of 2019, we saw the volatility also get up above 5%. That marked a, a fairly major top. I mean, I, I don't know if we would call it a market cycle top. Obviously, there's a lot of subjectivity to market cycles. I wouldn't call it a market cycle top. But if you just think of Bitcoin as a series of impulsive moves followed by corrective phases, then this was certainly one to, to take advantage of. And you can see that the volatility on the 60-day scale in fact, went above 5%. The same thing in March of 2020, right? We had we had a, a major wick down to $3,800 on the on the hourly time frame, and the volatility spiked above 5%. But it all, again, it also marked a bottom. So what we notice is that when you have price going down and volatility hitting 5% or more, the 60-day scale, you see a major bottom. But on the other hand, when you see the price going up and volatility hitting that 5% threshold, you see a top. Again, March of 2020, you see a bottom. Now, since then, you can see that we came down and then we came all the way up and we hit another top of about 5%. And it happened in March. And it basically marked yet another significant top for Bitcoin. But what's interesting is the summer lull, which we did talk about ahead of time, we warned about, uh, you know, ahead of time, not the November one, unfortunately, but look at this, the volatility during the summer lull also hit 5%, the 60 day scale before we before we started moving higher. So you could argue that that marked a local bottom. Okay, so what I'm trying to show here is that over the last several years, if the price is going down, and the volatility is going to say 5% or more on the 60-day time frame, then it marked a, a local bottom. But on the other side, when price was moving higher quicker, quickly, and the volatility went to 5%, it more or less marked a local top. So I think the, the thing to focus on here is when will the next time be that Bitcoin's 60-day scale volatility hits 5%? And if we're in a downtrend at the time, then perhaps it would mark a major bottom. Or if it happens at an uptrend, then maybe it would march a major, mark a major top. Right now, you can see that it's spiking a little bit. It's currently at around 3.623%. So this will be something to keep an eye on. If it spikes all the way up to 5% on the 60-day scale, will this in fact be a you know another local bottom before Bitcoin goes on, on some other rally? Or... If we don't hit 5% anytime soon, then the market could stay boring for, for, for a longer period of time. So let's just see what, what sort of unfolds over here. If you quickly look at the 30-day, there's obviously a lot more noise. Um, I mean, you could probably draw some, some similar conclusions, though. You know, when you see these things spike to around the 5% threshold, you can kind of see local bottom, local top, right? Local bottom, 
local top, local bottom. Same type of thing, right? When you see those volatility spikes, they, they typically signify either a local bottom or a local top. It generally is just the reverse of what the price is doing, right? So if the price is going down and you see the volatility spike up to a 5% or so, it generally goes back the other way. But if price is going up and it spikes 5% or so, it generally goes back down the other way. And then finally, you can also look at the 180 day, which I'm not sure is as useful uh, when I was looking at it. Um, just cause I mean, at this point you are getting into a, a very much lagging indicator to look at 180 days, but I figured I would show it just in case anyone wants to, well, anyone wants to see it. Hopefully you guys like the content and you like the additional, the additional stuff that we're showing on here. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel. If you guys like it, give the video a thumbs up and remember to check out the sale on the premium list into the cryptoverse.com. You'll get access to all this stuff like price metric charts, ROI charts, logarithmic regression charts um on chain derivative charts social metrics etc so you'll get access to a whole lot of stuff as long as you do not cancel you can lock in the low rate thank you guys for tuning in i will see you next time bye